Welcome to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, where it's all about helping your veterinary practice attract, engage, and retain clients. Broadcasting a new podcast every Monday from sunny Southern California, here's your host, Brandon Bashirs. Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 209 of the Veterinary Marketing Podcast. I hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's episode, we're going to talk about creating evergreen content and evergreen offers. What this is going to be doing for you is helping you to set up your marketing as a system. We're going to talk about how to approach this, though, from a way that I've not discussed yet. And I think it's going to be extremely, extremely helpful because it's going to help you to focus on things that will produce results for a long time. So before we begin, I want to mention a couple things. First, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe in iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from. And if you could do me a huge favor, please leave an honest review if you enjoyed the podcast. If you think I could fix it or improve it somehow, let me know. Shoot me an email or send me a message. You could also send me a message on the Facebook group, The Veterinary Marketing Nerds. That's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash The Veterinary Marketing Nerds. No space. And there you can get help if you need any help get ideas collaborate there's tons of really smart marketers in there so head on over there it's a great place to be all right let's talk about today's episode and i was thinking about today's episode because of the last episode where i talked about wanting to create a mix of content and offers and you should be creating more offers than you probably are right now because veterinary practices are actually getting pretty darn good at creating content but what they're not the best at is creating offers So this is going to help you to really figure out what should you be creating content about? How can you use it? I think the goal with most practices should be that you can create content that you can reuse and repurpose often. Thinking that you're going to post something one time, either on Facebook or Instagram, or put it in a way that you can only use one time is not going to be helpful. And especially with the way that the algorithms are and all the noise on the internet, using it multiple times is even more important than ever because, number one, if somebody has already seen it, they probably need to see it again just because of the way that people are, especially if it's educational and helpful and helps to actually sell the product or service. Um, it's it's going to be very, very important. Then I kind of, this is kind of coming along. Last episode, I mentioned that we're getting a puppy. It's a great Pyrenees and Anatolian Shepherd mix. And we're getting it in a couple weeks here. We're just trying to do tons of research. And it's very difficult to find content, especially because the, the default answer is, well, you should ask your veterinarian. We don't have a veterinarian yet. And I have a bunch of friends who are veterinarians. But I've seen all those posts about, you know, just because I'm a veterinarian doesn't mean you need to ask me about your dog at parties type of a thing. And so I definitely don't want to be bugging people with uh, my, my questions. And I thought it would be interesting just to kind of get um, an idea for what's out there and who to trust. And I'm going to be really, really blunt here. Veterinarians are not the people that are out in the forefront when it comes to content about getting new dogs, about behavior training, about food and trying to find out reputable sources that have answers to the exact questions that I have as somebody who's getting a puppy, it's a really, really helpful experience because I can give people, I think, a little bit better insight onto the different things that once you set these things up in your practice, it's going to help attract new clients that are going to want to come in the door and that are going to want to be clients for life. And I think that that's what your content should be doing. It should be helping to move people along your funnel and move people into becoming a client. And so let's talk about this. There are things and questions about dog ownership or cat ownership or keeping your your pet healthy that are basically eternal. And I kind of tried to think about this and break it down into categories. And you can think about this. You probably have a better idea based on what people ask you in your practice especially when they're in appointments and in visits and things. And, you know, it's very interesting, too. I think that especially with all of the curbside stuff that's going on, it's even more important than ever to be creating content because you don't have that face-to-face interaction like you used to if you're still doing curbside. And so people, if they see you, they're going to be able to interact with you, even if it's them consuming your video content. And so if you have the ability to create content because now the clients are not in the practice right now. Maybe you're doing curbside still. Maybe they're not in the practice. Uh, If you can basically kind of get 
things done while you're doing them instead of having to set up time and cameras and, and all that kind of stuff, I think that would be really, really helpful. But um, let's talk about this. I think there's some just five general categories of content that you can create things around. And I'm sure you can add to this or detract from this, whatever you think. But things that people want to know about when it comes to their pet are wellness in general, what should I be doing to keep my pet well? Like, what are these major kind of cornerstone things that we need to do? Prevention, how do I make sure that nothing bad happens? And I think prevention is incredibly important, especially if you can paint the picture of the potential for what is or what will be. Then we have behavior. How do I get my pet to do this thing that I want them to do? The fourth is nutrition in general. Like, what should my pet be eating? How can I make sure? And this definitely there's some overlap with wellness. And then enrichment. How can I make both of our lives better? What are the things that I can do? What are the things that I can buy? Etc. And obviously you can add or detract from this list as much as possible. And so if you can answer questions that are going to be about these kind of five general areas, these are things that are going to be able to be reused over and over and over again. So there's definitely like the spectrum here where we have super general and ultra specific and we're trying to find i think a sweet spot that is going to be specific enough that it's going to be interesting but at the same time general enough that it's not going to only have an audience of five people so when it comes to doing content or marketing you're trying to find your key demographics here. And so there's, I think, a few filters that you can place on top of these general kind of categories of things. And we're going to go into some examples and how to use this in just a second. But you can apply additional filters. And the more filters that you put on, the more specific it gets. As these topics get more specific, they become more relevant to only you know fewer and fewer people. That being said, though, it, as it becomes more relevant, it becomes more interesting in general. I'll give you an example. Right now, you're listening to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast. I could have just called it the Marketing Podcast. It would be far more general. And chances are, if you're in veterinary medicine, you probably wouldn't have found it because it wouldn't be specifically for you. So this is getting more general. I'm, in one hand... Uh, cutting down the potential for my audience, but at the same time, it's becoming more interesting to people that are in vet med. So by saying this is people for, this is for people inside of veterinary, veterinary medicine, I've cut out like 99% of the market. My market is still big enough that I can create a podcast, engage with people and have an audience that I'm happy with. If I said, I'm going to do a special podcast, it's going to be the, um, veterinary optometry marketing podcast, right? And I only talk about how to market a specific procedure inside of veterinary medicine. It wouldn't be very relevant to hardly anybody, right? Except it would be relevant to the boarded specialists who want more of those specific procedures. And so there's a fine balance between making sure that your, your message is going to be um, just kind of just right for what you're looking to do. And there might be times when you want to talk about ultra specific conditions. You know, if you're talking about IVDD, for example, that's going to be very specific to certain conditions and, and certain breeds. And it's going to be very, very relevant to a certain group of people. Is that audience big enough that that's something you would want to do? Or is that the business model that you're pursuing? That's going to be a question for you. So let's talk about this. We had those five kind of general major terms that you can use to build content around. Is it about wellness, prevention, behavior, nutrition, or enrichment? And then from there, you can apply additional segmentation filters on top of that. You can talk about the age of the pet, which I think is definitely probably one of the go-tos if you're asking me, because you just have large pockets of population that have puppies that have like younger dogs and then older dogs or older cats, right? And each one of those have different problems. The reason why this is helpful and why applying these kind of segments is helpful is because it answers the question, okay, that's great, but does it work for me? 
And that's what everybody wants to know. If you tell them the most insightful thing ever, they'll say, okay, that's that's all good, but is it going to work for me? Because I want to know, you know, here's my situation. And no matter where you are, that's what people are wondering. If you tell them, hey, this is a fantastic dog food. It helps your, your pet live healthy, like blah, blah, blah. This is what I suggest. They'll say, well, I have a, you know, such and such breed. Is that a good fit still? Right? They're going to ask those questions. And I'm sure that when you're in the exam room with your clients, that's what they're asking. Okay, that sounds great. But is this going to work for me? Because that's ultimately the only thing people care about. It's very, very important that you remember that. So additional segments that you can add are age specific, breed specific, um, specific conditions, uh, things that are based on your specific location, things that are based on time of year. And I mean, you could go on and on, but what are things that people typically care about? It's, it's things that are hyper relevant to them. So let's talk about this then. Let's say you are going to do a piece of content, maybe a video or something about um, wellness. And you want people to come in to the practice for their, their wellness visits. And you're going to make it for cat clients because you need to talk about cat clients so you could make it ultra specific ultra general hey this is very important that you are you know following up and making sure that your cat comes in and here's what we check for here's why it's beneficial right and it's very general not super compelling you could also take it up a notch and say hey if you have a, a cat and it's 13 or over here are the specific things that we're looking for when we do wellness. And here's things that you need to be looking for. Are there any of these behaviors that you're seeing? Are there any of these, right? And you start getting into all of these different um, kind of segments that are going to help you to be more specific, more interesting to, to certain segments of pet owners. And that's going to make the call to action a lot more compelling. Another thing too, is that if you're going to create content that's based on time of year, possibly like hey it's it's fall time here's what you need to be worried about or it's winter time let's talk about you know are your dog's feet going to freeze outside what should you do what should you be worried about right that kind of stuff is i think really really beneficial because it's timely um, and so if you make something like that just make sure that you're putting it in a place that's going to be relevant to the um the future offers that you make so that you reuse it over and over again if you have something like that, especially if it does well, you need to be creating what I call a content silo. It's where you basically put and link up all of your content so that it's relevant to a specific offer. So with, with content silos, we start out with figuring out what are our core offers that we want to be offering here. So like when I say offers, I mean, we have wellness visits, for example, we have um, like dental packages, we have wellness plans, we have um, specific surgeries or procedures or therapies, right? And so with that, we're going to be having a call to action that is going to be relevant based on the content. So, you know, for example, um, let's say we're creating a piece of content that's built around senior pets and we're going to say, hey, it's getting to be winter time. If you have a senior pet, you might notice them doing the, these things they might be slowing down a bit they might be uh, having difficulty jumping in and out of cars you know they might not want to move because like you know what to say so anyways if you can get that specific then you can say we have this pain management um system that we're we're working on here's what that includes and here's why it's beneficial and so if you see your dog doing x y and z that is a telltale sign that they need to come in. And so you're creating content that you can reuse over and over again while at the same time you are driving traffic in to a specific offer. And I'm not saying that you're discounting it all here because you don't have to necessarily. You're just creating awareness based on the, these different things and these different elements. I think too, if you can create content and you're going to tell a pet owner that here's the problem to be looking out for. If you see your pet doing this, then that's something that you need to be on the lookout for. If you can point a finger at the problem and if the content can include elements 
that point of finger at the problem, it's going to be very helpful for driving people in the door because they'll say, oh, I remember my vet talked about this. I need to do this in, in reaction to it. So I think that um, when we're talking about creating content and creating offers, figuring out how to create offers that are both general and specific enough, it's the paradox of being ultra general or ultra specific where you don't want to be too far on each side. Um, and also you don't want to be too much in the middle. So finding that sweet spot and really testing this is going to be helpful. But I think if you take the approach of I'm going to make content, maybe just try once a month or twice a month to start out with and make something that is what I would call pillar content. So we don't just go into the basics. We actually dive into that actual like mechanics of how does this work? Why is this important? If you are going to create like the ultimate guide for like pain management for senior pets, what would that look like and what would that include? And think about if you just spent, I know that like this sounds crazy, but if you spend an hour thinking about this and executing it and it was something that was so valuable because it really answered the questions, think about how much that could change your business because your clients would be able to really, really um, rely on your information and they would want to use your services because they feel like you're giving the best information and giving the best kind of value to them. So if you're, if you're able to really kind of build out those kind of pillar content pieces that you can reuse and rotate through that are going to be extremely valuable. And when creating pillar content is, I think, a good term for it. But when you're creating pillar content that you can use for your practice, if if you're thinking of, I'm going to make something that's going to be so good that people will want to share it with their friends, especially if they have their, their pet or they're at their friend's house and their dog's doing something, and they see that, they would say, oh, I have the video to send you. We have to look this up right now. I think that should be the goal for these types of videos and or pieces of content. You can do video or you can do written i think just video is so much easier to produce in general um and it also lets people see you so my suggestion for most of these would be making videos that you're going to then reuse and continue to send out and i like to doing things that are set up so that you can build email sequences around them that you can build mini courses around them and that sounds like a really kind of weird concept but let's say you were going to do um uh, the senior pet wellness uh, kind of mini course, right? And you could talk about nutrition, prevention of things, pain management of things, and each one of those videos could be one of the course pieces that you send out on an ongoing basis. And they could all be relevant and directly drive traffic into the practice for specific procedures, therapies, or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, especially as things like cell, um, stem cells and all kinds of other therapies come out. Like there's going to be a huge demand for this kind of stuff. Um, and so it's just something to, something to think about, but really providing that value and, uh, creating content that you can reuse over and over again is going to help you to take your marketing from something that you have to do into a system that actually serves your business that you can continue to reuse over and over again and not just get a one-time kind of value out of that that marketing piece. So I hope this makes sense because um, I think it's really, really important. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and we'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day, everybody.